Hello YouTubers, I'm creating this video today to go over some options with you regarding TCP Optimizer. Now I know that you've already seen dozens of videos explaining this already in regards to how to get the best performance in multiplayer games such as first person shooters, games like BF3, BF4, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, etc. Um, there is a lot of good information in those videos. There is a lot of pertinent information in those videos that I've also watched. Um, the purpose of this video is I want to tie in a few things regarding TCP Optimizer and some of the settings. Now, there's been some dispute on whether to use this or that setting in this or that kind of way. Uh, I've done some research on my own. It's been over six, seven months. And I found that these options are the best to use. Now we'll go to here, look at Windows default settings. And as you can see here, um, those are the default settings on it. And the custom is the actual settings that I have used based on my research. Um, again, those videos, forms, documentations, websites, etc. And I found that there has always been a correlation between what the videos and websites and forms said, and they all seem to agree on most of these settings. So I want to discuss that with you here today. Also, I want to talk about something else here. There is a direct correlation between TCPU Optimizer and um, your NIC adapter, um, the advanced setting tab uh, that has not been discussed in the same video as TCP Optimizer. And that is going to be the difference between my video and the dozens of other videos that are out there. I haven't seen it. It might be out there. I haven't seen it, but there is a direct relation between changing settings in your TCP Optimizer and your NIC card. And Unfortunately, and the reason for this is that for this video is that there are separate videos telling you to make changes to your NIC card advanced setting tab, and there are videos telling you to make changes to your TCP optimizer, which are separate from any changes that you ever made to your NIC card. So if you ever watched a video with researching about what changes to make on your NIC card, and then you separately went ahead and made changes to your TCP optimizer, you may not have the most optimal settings for online gaming. So I want to relate the two and get you to understand a few things that there are some overlapping features that you need to be made aware of. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. As you can see here, I've went ahead and uh, added the uh, properties of the um, my NIC card here, went into the advanced setting tab. So let's begin. You already know the connection speed. You already know the MTU, which is 1500. Now, TCP window auto tuning. A lot of people say set it to restricted, highly restricted, or most likely disabled. There's no need to do that. Absolutely no need to disable TCP window auto tuning. Leave it on normal. Okay. Window scaling heuristics. This is what you want to disable. This is what you've been getting a lot of information feedback on to disable it so it doesn't override TCP window auto tuning. So, yes, you want to disable that. Congestion control provider is set to CTCP. Now, here's an interesting thing. Receive side scaling. Receive side scaling is, and I'll, I'll roll over that, enables paralyzed, parallelized processing of received packets for multiple core processors, requires a, and here's the important part, RSS capable network adapter. Here's where we start getting into some of the overlap. And it starts with, in this case, I'm starting with receive side scaling. So once you open up your network adapter through device manager, um, you go ahead and you look for receive side scaling. There it is. It's going to be there, folks. Now, if you buy a separate adapter, the settings may be a little different, which you have to plug into your PCIe slot. They may be a little different. But for this sake, I'm only talking about those NIC adapters that are built into the motherboard that you purchase for your PC. Now, receive side scaling is enabled here. So you must make sure that receive side scaling is enabled here. The second part to this is receive side scaling cues. 
It's a debate whether you're using one, two, three, or four. I've had quite a few motherboards in my time. I've never accused a four. I've only seen one and two. One Q is used for when low CPU utilization is required. Two Qs is used when good, and this is the important part, good throughput and low CPU utilization is are required. Now, basically that means that if you plan on transferring a lot of files and a lot of large files, then you want to use two core two queues, or if you have the option four queues, which I'm assuming is for uh, moving large files. If you're just gaming, one is going to be enough. I've tried it on BF2, BF3, I'm sorry, BF3, BF4, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3. I've not seen any noticeable difference using one or two queues, so I just leave it on one. Moving forward, Net DMA. TCP, TCPA, I've personally set it to disable. It says enables direct memory access between the network card and application buffers to minimize CPU usage. Because I use a quad core i7, um, I don't feel the need that I need this, um, so I've disabled it. Um, I'm still looking to see if there's any real benefits between having enabled or disabled. So far, I have not seen any. And I've only played BF4 and uh, Black Ops 3. So I've left it disabled for right now. Now, direct cache access. This is, this is a, a hot one here. It says it allows a network controller to deliver data directly into a CPU cache, reducing memory latency in high bandwidth environments. Now, again, high bandwidth environments. Games typically don't create a high bandwidth environment, but be that as it may, we would still like to get, uh, you know, data delivered directly into the CPU cache, you know. However, there's a catch, there's a caveat to this. It must be supported by the NIC, the CPU, let me click on it again, and chipset. Okay, let me repeat that. In order for this to work, you have to, must have support by the NIC, CPU and chipset. Time to live 64. You already heard that. No need to discuss it. ECN capability disabled. It can cause some. Uh, dispel. It can cause some stability issues and other applications and programs you use for online gaming, etc. Checksum offloading and TCP chimney offloading. Now. In this version of TCP Optimizer, which is the most current version, they put they finally put these two together instead of separating one here and one here. So if your version of TCP Optimizer doesn't look exactly like this, you want to go to their website and download the most recent version, which also supports Windows 10. So and both of those are disabled. Um, the gist of it is, is that they induce latency for stability purposes. Um, if you're not having any stability issues, uh, if you're not having any issues involving stability, uh, you want to disable them. Now, here's some overlapping with your NIC card. And if you've been one of those type that have been researching, what settings do I need to enable or disable on my NIC card? You want to disable that on your NIC card as well, because this is an option there. Now, I'm going to go here to offloading options and you can see here ipv checksum for checksum offloading and tcp udp checksum offloading uh for ip v6 and v4 you want to go ahead and disable them all as well as you can see they're all disabled there's a little overlap there now you want to enable windows scaling on tcp 1323 options and we're going to go to the advanced settings of TCP Optimizer. And I've done some research on this, Internet Explorer optimization. Uh, maximum connections per one underscore zero server. Max connections per server. Um, most people recommend 20. Maybe it's my setup. I don't know. I don't know it's anything above eight. Now, the... Original default settings was four and two. I read some information, uh, found out that in BF4, eight and eight seems to be most optimal. I've used that. I've noticed some improvements. 
Now, host resolution priority, I, I, I did what most other people did. I let TCP Optimizer change it. That's what happened. Um, this is the default settings. Um, I see no real reason to change those. Um, when using TCP Optimizer, um, it changes it to that if you use Optimal. But it, it doesn't really make any much of a difference. SYN uh, attack protect. I don't mess with it. Now, what's interesting below that is TCP max data retransmissions. This is an interesting option here. If you set it to one, it should default. It should be nothing there, right? It's NA. What I did was I set it to one. And I would play in game and I would lose connection. Connection to the server has been lost. Never happened before. So using one basically means that you have, you experience no packet loss whatsoever. None. It goes through the first time, every time, on time. Um, if you set it to one, that means that you're telling your system that it has no problems to this server. You set it to three. Um, you can experiment with one. Um, but if you lose connection, that would be the first place I would look, changing that to a higher number, such as three. It says between three and 10, I think. Uh, let me scroll down on it. Yes. Um, recommend is three to 10. And I said it on three. I haven't had any problems since. So, all right, let's move on here. DNS error caching, I set to zeros. Quality of service is zero. Gaming tweaks and network throttling index. Now, for me, I've always had instability issues, changing network throttling from its default setting. System responsiveness, however, I changed that from its default of 20 to zero. Have I had any problems? Thing is though, I've not noticed any difference. That's just me. So game tweak, gaming tweak, disabled nag Nagel's uh, algorithm. You want to change TCP acknowledge frequencies from default, which is NA, to disable. You want to change TCP no delay to enable, which is one, which is which is recommended. And TCP delay ACK ticks, I left alone. Don't need it. Don't want to. Now, network memory allocation. Here's a very tricky one here. This large system cache people tell you to enable. I researched this. Come to find out that this was only meant for Vesta. Uh, if you have a Vesta system, it might behoove you to enable it. Um, but for Windows 7, Windows 8.1, Windows 8.0, Windows 10, it has no function in those OSs. So I leave it on default. Now, the size, however, still works, although large system cache doesn't on Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, and Windows 10. Now, here's the thing with this. Some people say use two. I'll leave it on default. Let me explain why. Let's go over that real quick. It says here that um, memory allocation for serving larger files over LAN. Okay. This is not for gaming at all. Dynamic port allocation, max user port is 65535. TCP timed wait delay is 30. So basically that's it. Um, going into the network settings, uh, NIC card, sorry, NIC card. I'll go over these settings real quick. Gigabyte master land, uh, master slave mode is auto detect. Interrupt moder moderation I have set to disabled. Jumble packs should be disabled. Large sin offloading. Any offloading should be disabled. Legacy switch compatibility. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Sorry about that. Legacy switch compatibility mode is disabled. This has nothing in it. Log link state event enabled. Offloading options, which I told you before, disabled. Performance. Uh, I'll go over that in a second. Priority and VLAN disabled. 
Receive size scaling we talked about already. Wait for length auto detect. Now, performance options. This is something interesting. You have adaptive inner frame spacing disabled. Flow control you want disabled. Interrupt moderate rate disabled. And receive side, receive buffers and transmit buffers to their default. Now, most of this, most of these options in here in this NIC card does create some form of latency, but it does so to create stability. That's basically what 95% or higher of the options in the NIC card are for. So basically, you're just disabling most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. So I thank you for your time. Uh, take care.